everyone, welcome to the Pugsley Crew Reviews podcast. Uh, I have with me uh, Kerr9000. How are you doing, Kerr? I, I'm not bad, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, for those wondering, I'm Peds. I didn't say. I don't think I ever do. I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how have you been? How have you been? I'm not been bad. Keeping That's busy good. as usual. Getting the reviews out. I noticed you had a recent review up for Batman on the arcade. Oh, um, I put some footage up of me playing through it. I reviewed it a long time ago. Well, I say a long time, a couple of years. But I found I'd got a load of footage of me playing through one of the missions that I'd never used. And it was quite good quality, so I thought somebody will probably enjoy watching the game. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I haven't actually got around to watch them myself, but I'll have to have a look now. When we finished, maybe. Um, so today we are going to be talking about a film called Hippopotamus. Uh, Kerr 9000 picked that film. Um, well, in 2018, called Hippopotamus. <laughs> one was this film. The other one was about some gay resort. And I was like, I don't think that's the one Kerr is on about. So I'll grab the <laughs> other one. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I grabbed the right film. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be a very awkward conversation. Um, it is strange, though, isn't it? Our films come out with the same name. It's like a couple ago we did Jack Frost, and that's both a warm family film and a horror film. Yeah, and they came out around the same time, like a couple of months between them. I think the horror film came first, didn't it? Yeah. Oh. It's a strange name, right? So I don't understand the name of the f why the film is called Hippopotamus. There's no hippopotamus, is there? No. Nah. There's a girl and a guy, and neither of them are hippopotamus. The only thing why it's called hippopotamus is because um, her brain is supposed to be damaged in the hippocampus, is it, or something? Ah, uh, right, maybe. When he says to her where it's damaged or something, she says hippopotamus. All oh, right, fair enough. So it's based off her fake saying of the part of her brain that's supposed to be the problem. Ah, the hippocampus. She says, I didn't even notice I say that. Um, so for those who are unaware, uh, hippopotamus came out in 2018. It is in the UK, it's rated uh, age 15. And it's uh, directed by Edward A. Palmer. Um, it's a British film, I believe, because, you know, it seems to be. <laughs> uh, do, do you know much of the director? I, I haven't seen uh, or no. recall anything else by them. But I'd never seen the name before. No, same here. Um, I basically read a brief... Apparently, he's only directed four things. Um, two of which are... Oh, three of which are short, so this is his only full-length film. Yeah, fair enough, I didn't know that. Uh, well, well, we'll we'll dive into the film then with um, with the, how it begins. Starts off straight away. Woman wakes up, and you just hear a voice going, "I've kidnapped you. Your legs are fucked." These are not the exact words. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm going to keep you here till you fall in love with me, and it's like okay, that's a bit odd. To, be, to start with, but um, I obviously not not a great deal happens throughout the film in some respects, as this is basically all set in one room, apart from a couple yeah. of flashbacks. But it's the majority of the film is just set in one room, and, and um, it, it's largely just a two person piece. I mean, you could almost do it as a stage play in a theatre, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. It'd work pretty well, actually, wouldn't it? None of the actors in it are people I know. I've never seen them in anything before. No, same here. But it's one of those films that, because it's something that's quite grounded in realism, you know, there's no zombies or vampires here. This is stuff that could really happen. I thought, you know, it's got the potential to be quite scary. And me and my missus watch a lot of true crime stuff. And... Quite a lot of women have been weirdly abducted by creeps who have really big cellars or... I mean, look at the Fritzels where the guy had got his daughter, like, underground in some bunker thing he'd built. Yeah. 
So it's weird, but these things sort of do happen. They do, yeah. So, like, with this, I was I was a bit confused at first because it starts off with the, the woman, like, being told all this information and then she's trying to work things out as the day pro- progresses, or at least it seems like the day. And she's, like, a little bit miffed. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, you need to take your pain meds and shit like that. And then she falls asleep, and then all of a sudden, he's repeating it. I thought, what the fuck's going on here, then? Why is he repeating? Oh, yes, your legs are fucked. Yes, that's the terminology that was used by me for the film. Your legs fucked. And I was thinking, like, why, why is he repeating himself? And you could see when he's repeating himself, he's kind of like, Ugh, as if to say, I can't be bothered to keep repeating myself. So, <laughs> so like from, from fairly early on, you realize that um, something's up with uh, her not remembering stuff. But obviously I attributed it to something he had done. Yeah, that's it's very much lean that way, isn't it? To make you think. Yeah. And... Um, he, there's like slow bits of progress in her recovery where she's like obviously her legs are fucked <laughs> she's got the big, this big bandage around her head where there's an apparent injury of some sort but as she's slowly recuperating from these injuries she realises that the head injury is not actually real or at least it doesn't appear to be or something so yeah she breaks the mirror don't she to look at the back of her own head yeah exactly and obviously the guy's watching her so i was thinking to myself how often has he been watching her doing the stuff she's been doing but he couldn't have been watching her much because she the st- as, as, as it progresses she's running around a room doing press-ups and so on and so forth and he doesn't know anything about her no like i said to the missus because uh, obviously i made her watch her as well i was like You'd expect him to have at least a camera in there. Well, nowadays, <laughs> yeah, with all the technology at hand and how easy it is to set up, like, ring cameras and things, you'd you'd think you'd go a bit more technical, but... Hmm. But while, while watching it, like, one of the things I wrote down is, like, how many times has he made her forget? Because I genuinely thought it was, like, the tablets he was giving her or something. Because at one point, he gives her, like, four fucking massive tablets, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's something in there that is making making her forget what's been going on. Yeah, because he says it's painkillers and um, contraceptives so she won't have periods, and basically says, don't worry, I'm not going to rape you, it's to save the mess and whatever and i said do you think they're muscle relaxants and that her legs aren't knackered she's just you know drugged yeah so i was down the same line as you wondering if the pills were what they were and what they really were doing to her i wonder if there were anything at all though because as it turns out there was nothing wrong with her legs no it was it so seemed to be pain meds it, it seemed to be that he was repeated while she was sleeping. She just repeated. He had a recording repeat saying, "Your legs are broken, and if you move, you'll be in fear of the pain and that kind of thing." Uh, again, not those words exactly, but basically, it was kind of like uh, I don't know the right terminology for when you physical conditioning. Yeah, that one. I think it's that. I've not done psychology in years, but I did do it as part of my degree. It's, 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 but it's definitely the power of suggestion. Yeah, so that, that's repeated throughout her sleep constantly. And obviously she's then... She's she's getting better as, as they're going along. And uh, she's, like, noticed that there's nothing actually wrong with her. She's, like, running around doing all this stuff to keep herself entertained. And then when he's there, she's like, come on, we'll try and walk again. And she's, like... Tended to be really struggling and oh, how yeah. oh, is she doing it? I thought that was pretty good. But um, as it as the story starts to progress, you you she starts having flashbacks to certain things, and like one of the flashbacks is of them two, like having a meal or something. And one of the things I I, I thought to myself was um, and and also the missus said the same thing is um. Were they in a relationship previously? Yeah. Then they split up, and now he's done this in a way to 
Karabakh. Yeah, me and Marmus is very much thought the same thing for <laughs> one point. Yeah. Because we thought, you know, were they together and he sodded it up, did something, cheated, whatever, needs her back and has gone crazy and basically come up with the most bizarre plot ever to, you know, get your ex back. Yeah. It was, there was, that, that was one of my thoughts. The other thought was, did something else happen? Which he's now trying to get her memory back which is what happened. And then I was like, is something else going on that we just aren't privy to yet? But um, it is an interesting uh, interesting film. I actually rather enjoyed it. It's Considering it's just two people in a room for the majority of the film, I, I uh, thought it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's only 77 minutes long, and it doesn't need to be a moment longer, really. It, it's perfect in that just as you think you're going to get bored, it like peels another layer back and presents something new for you to ponder. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can, uh, I can agree with that one. But it's definitely a one watcher, and it you'll never watch this again in your life. No, I, I probably wouldn't watch it again. You know all the the twists and turns now. Yeah, but I don't think the ending is entirely clear what has fully, fully really happened. Because the thing is, you start off and you think that he's a bastard, and then, to me at least, you feel a bit sorry for him later on. Yeah, definitely. And her, and then, for different reasons. <laughs> and then you're stuck thinking, well, was he telling her the truth and he's trying to help her? Or is he trying to manipulate her and just keeps moving on from lie to lie? That is one of the things I was actually uh, thinking about. Is like, is the story true? Is the thing he is saying to her actually true? But she seems to remember it. But then again, is that being put there in her head? Yeah, it doesn't really let you know, does it? You've only got his word and a few flashbacks in her head to go on. And with things like hypnotism and, you know, you never know quite where you stand with this. Exactly. I do. Th- I I think that maybe he was telling the truth, but um, I'd lean that way. Yeah. So basically, the story is is she was raped by her flatmate, or yeah, flatmate. I'd say roommate. Same thing. Flatmate. Um, <clears throat> she uh, maybe sustained a head injury or just blocked it out, but she can't remember anything from before that night. And every time she goes to sleep, she forgets everything. So um, he is trying to help her regain her memories. And it seems successful (laughs) in that she remembers it, they get it on, and then all of a sudden she seems to stab him (laughs) with the glass, the mirror. Uh, So I don't know what's going on there. Like, I was leaning towards him actually being like, trying to help get things sorted. But for her to react the way she did, did something else go on that you, you know, again, not privy to? Or did she, did his plan of having her as a captive, because it shows at one point that like different scenes of them to work and to try and work it out. And it shows uh, like they they literally talking about helping her. She's also in on helping herself. Um, when she's drawing and they're talking about her and they're sitting down chatting and then he seems to do different scenarios. Was this scenario a bit too far? And that's why she freaked out in the end. Because she was he, he was holding her captive, even though he wasn't really, he was really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's like in a way she's messed herself up because that might have been her chance to break this and remember... But then, you know, it's scary to have to face the fact that she was raped and that this guy was killed and all these other things happened. So did she just decide she couldn't face it all? Or is it just the innate human need for freedom? Was she just desperate to be free and to run off and didn't care whether it was for her good or not? Exactly. But uh, I would say she just wanted to be free. I think maybe the whole... The whole 
captive thing was a bit too much. I think maybe a different approach would be better. And to be fair, what should have been done if everything was true is they should have just formed the police at the time and dealt with it. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh shit, I'll kill him and run away and take her with me. And it's just like, okay, it's, it's just daft. <laughs> No, it is one of those films where you just, at the point where everything happens, you just go, okay, I'd have phoned the police, this would be over, because they'd be dealing with it, and hospitals would be involved, but then you'd, you know, you'd have a lot shorter films around. Sometimes people have to make stupid mistakes to make the plot go the way you want it to go, I guess. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But, you know... <laughs> bloody daft but uh, it's understandable that like he reacted the way he did in the initial like smacking the guy off his missus but everything after that was just stupid even the other guy was like we need to phone an ambulance and get her help and he's like no you listen to me I, that's, that's how he sounds in the film <laughs> but uh, like the, the other guy who because there's, all in all, there's four characters in the film. Uh, there's the captured girl, the capturer guy, the flatmate who's the rapey guy, and then a friend who gives capturing guy a lift. I forgot their names. So he is then, after the guy kills the rapey guy, He's freaking out in the car going like, why did you get me involved in this? Why am I involved? And then he drops him off somewhere. People are going to wonder where this bo this guy have just vanished to, or if he's just left in, they found him dead. You think people would be looking? Yeah. Um, but where they appear to be appears to be the middle of nowhere, doesn't it? Which I yeah. suppose why he couldn't get ring doorbell camera things and security. <laughs> but yeah, he did manage to have a dictaphone and things to say all his stuff every morning so it's, you know yeah there was plenty of things and uh obviously he was able to buy them because it seemed to be that they were like on a little tiny island across a little lake or something yeah and he would have to roll back and forth originally i thought he was gonna be for some reason underneath a zoo probably because <laughs> of the name hippopotamus but also yeah. the fact he kept sneezing all the time and i thought there's got to be somewhere where allergies are playing him up. Or, and I'm like, is that going to come into it? Are they going to be somewhere? And he's sneezing constantly. But uh, there didn't really ever become a reason for him sneezing. Unless that's when he wanted her to know he was there. He was purposely sniffling and clearing his throat and stuff. Yeah, it's probably a good, uh, it's a good thought on it. Because at one point he's watching her through the crack of the door. Yeah. And he and she's doing stuff, and he just goes, and then she stops doing what she's doing and goes back. So maybe it is little thing like, I I can see you. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was conditioning her with it. Yeah, when you hear these noises, you'll you know, run and heel against your wall. And what do you think of the ending of it then? Because like I said, after the after, after it all happens. After she gains her memory and stuff, she stabs him. I don't know why. My thought process is, even though everything may be true, she probably still fucking freaked out by the fact that the guy has uh, got her captive. At least to her, it seems that way. Yeah. But who knows? But then he sta she stabs him. She runs off. Gets quite a bit away. Starts to, like, untie the ball to to leave the little island thing they're on. And then for some reason she just randomly collapses. I have no idea why. No, it's a bit, you know. Because she was never really ill, so there's no reason there. It's not like she's massively exerted in herself. He never really hit her when they were struggling and she stabbed him, so... He seems to have been feeding her enough and giving her enough lick. So there's no real reason she collapses other than you wouldn't be able to have the ending you wanted. Yeah. Which if obviously... If fell and hit her head or something, you could have had the same ending without a lack of reasoning. Yeah. Or if she'd turn around, 
and changed her mind and gone to apply pressure to his neck. And he recaptured her or something. You know, it just seemed we want her to pass out so the cycle can start again. So she's going to pass out. Yeah, I am confused though. Right after after she escapes and she collapses, obviously the guy goes and gets her and takes her back. But the blood that was spraying out of his neck and all over the place, how the fuck did he even live? <laughs> yeah, it does seem a lot of blood. Like she must um, have stabbed him in the throat or something. It's possible to live through wounds like that, but only with you know proper medical attention. I don't think you're gonna put some bandages around your own neck and just wait it out, you know what I mean? But Maybe he had a pret stick and just rubbed it on his neck. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the cycle starts again, but instead of her being capture, captive, he, she says, uh, he says something along the lines of, oh, your surgery went well. Unfortunately, there's been a little bit of memory loss. So we're going to try and get you back on your feet, that kind of thing. Yeah, so basically he's trying the whole thing again with a different scenario. Yeah. And it's thus painting the idea that this cycle's going to continue again and again till either she does remember or kills him. Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, I enjoyed the film. The film wouldn't happen if he uh, had got the police involved straight away, but you should have got the police involved. <laughs> Words of advice, if you're watching this and you uh, happen to knock somebody out and kill them in self-defence, don't run off to an island with a comatose person, phone the authorities and uh, Get a make help. the more normal yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You can't uh, say we're not informative if anything else. Exactly, exactly. Be sensible. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, what did you think of the film overall then? Uh, I you know, would like to hear what you've got to say. I think it's quite a good, strong film for, you know, a limited cast. And you can tell there's not a massive budget to it. And clearly it's somebody's first full-length film. If I'd made this as a first film, I'd be well over the moon with it. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, in the future we'll see something else from this person with some money injected into it. But pretty good film. It's, you know, not going to change the world, but six or seven out of ten territory, maybe. That's fair enough. I rather enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty interesting, and I actually liked the mystery around of like why he's captured her and why is he repeating himself? What's going on? Like, are they? Um, I, I, I didn't like the ending in a way, in the sense of like she fucked him up repeatedly stabbing him and he was literally on the floor like pretty much dead and then he summoned back to having her in there i think that was a little bit i don't know i guess <sighs> bit of a shit bait and switch but yeah. up until that point like i i, I would rather enjoy rather enjoyed her uh i'm just it, it's just shame that she collapsed for no reason and he somehow was fine he seemed a bit like <sighs> when he was walking off he seemed kind of curled up as if he was in pain or something yeah like, but like the blood all over the fucking room after she'd stabbed him there must have been about five gallons of it i don't know how much a gallon is at least six pints of blood <laughs> they oversold the injury she'd done on him a bit if you're gonna have him live yeah He's supposed to be a normal man not jason Voorhees, like so <laughs> Other than small little complaints i think it's pretty good yeah it's like i said the the mystery part of it was probably the, the most interesting thing just find out why she's there why she's got memory issues and all that and it's quite interesting I would definitely give it like a about like about seven out of ten as well. I enjoyed it, apart from the ending. I thought that was a bit, a bit, you know, it's 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 one of those things where a lot of films will have a twist. I don't think yeah. it needed it. It didn't need the twist at the end, where it's like, oh, she escaped, but then she's captured again by the same person who clearly should be dead. 
Like, I know they do that in a lot of thrillers where the bad guy, you think he's dead. But he's not dead and he comes back for you. But it it didn't seem the right kind of... Kind no, of film other for than it? little things like that, they seem quite realistic. So it was like tacking a almost fantasy ending onto something real. Mm. The ending could have been he's dead. She runs off, gets on the boat. The film ends, and we don't know yeah. whether it was fake, real, or you know, you'd still have the same thing where it's left to the viewer's imagination. Yeah. And it could just be all oh, this is his obsession and that none of the stuff was true. We, we'll never know. But uh, uh, have you got anything else to add about the film? No, I think uh, I think that's it. I thought both the actors in it were pretty good to say the people I don't know. Yeah. I have no they idea. believable. Yeah. I did have some issues when I was watching it with. Sometimes it seemed like it'd be a little out of sync sometimes, but I don't know if that's just my stuff playing up. But other than that, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that is going to be us with this then. Um, anything you would like to plug, Kerr? No, just uh, basically Kerr 9000 on YouTube and TikTok and everything, and there's more of my talk about films as well as games on there. Nice. Well, that about wraps it up for us then. Uh, check out the film if you haven't seen it. Uh, Hippopotamus, it's 2018, like I said. Uh, this one is about, uh, not about a closed down gay lounge bar thing. It's not that one. That seems like it'd be a different film altogether. <laughs> anyway, bye everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure as always. See you soon. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.